Be sure to go to FlipSideGaming.com and use promo code 6 for 10% off on orders over $10. It's a good deal and it helps support the show. And if you use the promo code, uh, you'll be entered in to win a Corset 2020 booster box on July 15th. You can see the description for more details on how to enter and how to win. What is up, Planeswalkers? Theric 6 back with some more Magic the Gathering Arena. I'm... Look, I have, I have already done this twice. I'm just going to go ahead and put myself back where I belong. <laughs> it, I, I'm getting used to like having the intro because the intro is not edited in. As I said, I don't edit videos. Uh, it, it's just in my recording software. <laughs> and I queue it up and things. It's whatever. Um, but today, today we're playing a Grixis deck. We're playing it in traditional ranked. It's technically a Grixis control deck. Now, this deck is a list by uh, Cheppa from a standard league on the 24th, and they went 5 out. This, this list intrigued the crap out of me, and like other lists where I have played stock, like winning lists, um, I have not changed this at all, uh, because I do want to play the list as is and see what exactly I like from it, because if I change things, I may um, be missing something um, that makes the deck worse that I've changed uh, that I don't realize. But what I love about this is that it's a, it's a control deck. This has 26 lands. And, you know, we have freaking Bolas, Bolas, Narset, a bunch of removal and stuff. Th this is a control deck. But it has eight cards that are aggressive. And I've been having... S Ugh, if you if you watch my last stream over on Twitch, which I will be doing today, now that I realize that. So come, come join me uh, over on Twitch at 1 p.m. U.S. Eastern, or U.S. Standard. I've been having such an issue with the Bant and Esper decks because Baby Teferi is just an annoying-ass card to be able to deal with. Jordor Butcher, as well as Main Deck Thief of Sanity, is that type of pressure that allows you to actually annoy and harass these Bant and Esper decks. Now, I've noticed that a lot of the times, these decks are counting on countering your spells instead of actually dealing with individual targets. They can, they obviously can deal with individual targets, but when you have something that grows so quickly on turn two, uh, or on turn three, if you play it on turn two, and just an annoying card like Thief of Sanity, it makes them use those removal spells early on in the game. And what that does is it'll, it leaves them, o them open so that on turn four, on turn five, they're not going to be able to have those counter spells because they're too busy dealing with the threats that you played the previous turns. And I think that... Based on, I, I played one match with this, and based on that match, I think that that is the reason that this deck is potentially going to do much better against those specific annoying decks. I'm going to, for the thumbnail, I'm going to try and figure out how to, like, transpose Bolus, like, into the background of Dreadherd Butcher, because I want to. But the main deck, use one main deck to rest, which I think is spot on, because so many uh, decks use stupid non-creature non-lands. Four Dreadherd Butchers, four Thief of Sandies. I've already talked about Dreadhorn Butcher. It's just such a fantastic card. Um, obviously, there's a bunch of bounce and exile uh, effects in the current standard. But if it does happen to die, you get to just deal that much more damage. And that's that's very helpful reach. Um, you can also, for what it's worth, you can kill it yourself. Right? You can just go ahead and Tyrant Scorn or Angrath Rampage or Bedevil. If you like know that your opponent is tapped down. But uh, for whatever reason... You can't kill them just yet, and you know that next turn they probably are going to be able to do something. You can just kill your Dreadhood Butcher and dome your opponent's face. Very helpful. Thief of Sandy. This is a card. This is a must answer card against other control decks because this will just generate so much card advantage, even if you only hit with it once or twice. Because not only are you going to know what exactly it is that their deck is playing in game one, it also means that um, you're going to have. Two, like, let's say it attacks and, and connects twice, right? You're going to have two additional cards, and then they're going to have to remove your Thief of Sanity, and that is an additional card. This is functionally a three-for-one, um, four-for-one kind of, I don't know, uh, at least a three-for-one, and that is just fantastic for you against other control decks. We have one Search Rest Kanta, and I really appreciate, I've seen a lot of Grixis decks move completely away from Search, and I I just can't, I can't do that, because Search Rest Kanta is, is a control mirror breaker, Um if you're able to get a Search for Ascanta transformed, it ver it means very much that you're going to be able to put up a bigger fight against these other control decks because you're just getting that much that many more cards, and then you can start just throwing things out because they're going to run out of things you aren't. 
So I, I really appreciate that there's still one in here. Two level coils. It's removal. I mean, it's, it's it exiles things. It's very important. Four thought erasures. It, we're playing blue black. We have to. Uh, two tyrant scorn. Um, because the amount of Nissas, blue green ramp decks essentially, um, has increased. This card gets much better. It just deals with pretty much all of the creatures that this blue green deck is playing, and it has some additional um, benefit if you're not playing against those decks. You know, if you're playing against um, mid-range decks, no one's playing that, uh, you can theoretically bounce something, but in this meta, you should be able to just kill things, right? And that's that's very helpful. Anchor Story Page is a one-of, which I think is I think is reasonable. Um, I did I was off on this card for a bit, but it's totally fine being able to just snipe a, a Planeswalker if they have it, um, or a, a very important creature if they have it, I think is uh, reasonable. For Bedevils, it, it kills everything, <laughs> except enchantments, which kind of sucks, but, you know, black, red, blue is not meant to deal with enchantments very well. Um, two Narsets. Narset is still a strong card. Also, it's the only glass style I have in here because she looks good in the glass style. Not not many others do. Um, but just making it so that your your blue opponent can't draw cards off of things like Hydrocrasis or... Um, just the Teferi draw or something like that is, is very important. And it is potentially a three for one if your opponent does decide to commit resources to killing it after you've gotten two activations. And that's very nice. A single God Eternal Kefnet. Now, I saw this and I was like, are there, because I saw like these, and I was like, are there a sufficient number of instant sorceries in the main deck? There are. You know, there's 14. That should be fine because you're not always trying to um, necessarily get the the value. The value, I think, it should just be considered a a, a, bo a boon, because at the end of the day, this is an annoying card for your opponents to get rid of, and it's a decent body for what it is. Four Bolas. It's Bolas. Four more Bolas. Bolas. We don't have a Eugene in this list. Um, that is one thing, and there's also none in the sideboard. Um, and that is one thing that I do think is a little shaky, because it does mean that we have no ways to deal with enchantments other than taking it out of our opponent's hand. Uh, and I, I don't like that, but still. I will talk about the sideboard because we're playing best of three. Um, two more duress, needed. Two negates. Also helps against enchantments, which is very nice, but there are so many just non-creature spells that are really powerful in this format that I think is necessary. Two elder spells. Planeswalkers everywhere. It, it's it's good. An additional lava coil, very helpful if you're going against a an aggressive or mid-range deck. Two cryocanariums. I feel like I want at least one Ritual of Soot because of the number of X3s, but Cry of the Canarium is very helpful at sweeping up Mana Dorks. It's helpful with dealing with, like, Mono White and Mono Red aggressive decks to, to an extent with Mono Red. You know, Steam, Steamkin and uh, Chain Roller are annoying bodies, but, you know, it's it's decent for there. Free Legion's War Boss. This is a card that you can just bring in. Let's say, for example, you, uh, in game one, it's, it's a control mirror. You're playing Grixis, your opponent's playing Esper or something. Uh, they see none of your aggressive elements in the main in the main deck, right? None of them. You, you seem like just a stock Grixis list. And let's say you've won. In game two, you can just bring in your Legion War Boss, take out a little bit of your control elements, and just smork the crap out of them. And let's say you lose. Let's say they, they anticipated it, and they brought in a bunch of removal. All right, take those out, bring in a bunch of your control package, and then watch them have a bunch of garbage cards in their hand right so uh war boss i still don't love war boss but since we're playing fifa sandy in the main deck i'm like all right sure war boss is an additional thing that's really annoying for your uh value-based opponents to deal with three out of the god eternals i'm kind of surprised i'm seeing this but i appreciate it for what it is which is in my opinion uh good life gain good removal against an aggressive deck yeah cool let's uh let's hop on in to traditional rank now i did play a single match with this and it was against a bant mid-range deck it had hydrocrasis it had um mana dorks Oketra, um some enchantment based removal both both sizes of teferi um was that the deck that had carnage tyrant i think it was i don't recall must have i don't think i played with normal bullets today yeah so I, like it had carnage tyrants as well uh but you know we were able to to prevail and um yeah, we we just we had an early start with Dreadhorde uh, Butcher. Uh, we're going second, so we get to draw a card. I'm gonna keep it. It's super risky, but we have a ton of threes. Blue black. All right, cool. I can't play Narset on turn three, but that should be okay. I assume we're gonna get Thought Erased here. Okay, so that is. 
That was a Doan's veto, I guess. I don't know if I feel comfortable casting a thing. Hmm. I mean, I could cast Narset. I assume this is Esper Hero? Could cast Thief. It might be better for me to cast... Narset can get countered by Dovin's Veto, which I'm fairly certain that they have. I don't know about Sinister. I don't know about Absorb. But it's less likely they have a counter for Thief, but they probably have, like, a Mortify for it. I'm just going to go ahead and cast Thief. We'll see what happens. Oh! Thought Collapse. So this, I guess, is maybe an Esper Ashiok style control deck. That's that's a thing. Oh, they are playing Planeswalkers. Um, second verse, same as the first? Like, they very obviously had Dovin's Veto. There's no way they would have kept that up. So I think... So, I mean, it, it's Planeswalkers. I assume it... I, I assume that it's either an Ashiok-based kind of Planeswalker deck, or my opponent just doesn't have the wild cards required. I'm just going to run back a Thief. And the reason I'm, I'm casting Thief again is because Nicobolus is more important to me and resolving. Because that's more that's a more guaranteed two-for-one. Um, what's nice about my situation is that I do have plenty of removal if my opponent does start uh, doing things. I don't want to see a Basilica Bell Haunt. That would be a little frustrating for me. I don't want to discard. Um, frankly, I'd probably discard the land. So my opponent didn't have another land, so that's nice. Um, that makes me just assume that my opponent has even more counter spells, but cool. So this, at the very least, will be a uh, two for one, and that's that's the reason. Like with Thief, they could kill it, and I would get like nothing out of it, right? Um, it would just be a one for one. But this way, I'm getting value. Um, so I can play Blood Crypt here. Totally fine. Wow, they had a Teferi. All right, that is very good for me. Uh, if they do top deck another Teferi, I will be able to just bedevil it and a Narset. Um, and if I cast Narset, my opponent doesn't have something here. Uh, All right, I assume they're just going to take Narset. Not really a reason necessarily to take one bedevil if I have two. Yeah. All right. Let's see, uh, let's see if Dreadward, Dreadward Butcher has any uh, response from my opponent. Nope. All right. So let's hope that they don't have anything. And uh, we're just going to start murdering them. If they top deck a Teferi, I can go ahead and bedevil it before they draw a card. I'm going to cast Teferi. Hmm, time Reveler. Unfortunate. Uh, that's definitely the worst one because it means we can't cast Bedevil on it. Yeah. Just press it. It would put it back in my hand, doesn't it? Owner's hand, yeah. So I'm fine with that. Because I could just cast it again. I'm known for my excellent and fight. attack him. And if my opponent counters it, then I can bedevil to fairy. Cast down. Darn oh, I don't even have to bedevil to fairy because boom. Um, will I cast a spell here? Go up to seven mana? No, I want to hide it. I want to hide it. Maybe I waste a Thought Erasure. 55? Oh, I got milled. I was like, why am I so so much lower than my opponent? All right. As Kanta, probably going to get countered here. Um, if they have Syncopate, they could do it for four. I can pay for four, so this is fine. And here's the Dovin's Veto that I think they ha they've had the entire game. Yep, yep. So, uh, we're, we're both kind of in top deck mode. I I don't have counter spells, but I do at least have removal. <laughs> I have plenty of removal. Um, yeah, I, I I could draw like four, four mana um, threats. Shit, they have a search. That's not good. Alright, um, well, I hope Dragon God resolves. Cool. Let's draw. I am one again. So unfortunately, they're going to be able to flip their Ascanta, and that's going to be an issue. 
going to be quite the issue. They, we know for a fact they don't have anything they could have interacted with this. So they, they have to draw it here or draw it here. And it looks like they're using that now, so they're looking for a way to deal with it. As I said, uh, often the control breakers are as Kanta, but I do, I'm do i going to be kind of toe-to-toe -to -toe with them because not only am I drawing two cards, I'm also getting rid of one of theirs. Teferi? Alright, can't cast Teferi right now. And all Teferi does is bounce, so... Just gonna keep doing this. Oh my gosh, Slaughter Razor. That is potentially very helpful. Um, so, actually, let's see what they got rid of. Cry? Okay. So they very well could have a... Counterspell here. Oh, they didn't. Kaiserath, don't even care. Get that crap out of my face. Don't need this. Go ahead and play the Water Grave out. Give me maximum mana. And yeah, I mean, we just... Yeah, so they get to choose what they get. So they draw one card and choose a card. But I draw a card, draw a second card, and I force them to remove something. So I do technically believe I'm ahead, as long as they don't get shit. That was... An incredibly stupid mistake on my opponent's part. Like, why not just kill my bullets? I'm, I'm just gonna cast this as well. Oh, they didn't have the mana. Never mind, I'm done. Sorry. <laughs> my bad. That said, you know, they still... Like, I'm gonna lose bullets, which sucks. Um, but that does take up their turn if they don't have another... Um, Another land. Then they can't even use as cancel yet, so. Dreadhead Butcher can just be a threat, be an annoying card while I try and draw another threat here. So I've lost I've only lost one of each of the boluses. Not two two of uh, the creature and one of the one of the dragon god. So I should be getting another one. Tyrant Scorn Shh or Teferi, sorry. Sure. Trust you gonna bounce my bolus? No, now you kill it. Okay. You gonna bounce my butcher? Are you just gonna draw a card in general? Nope, you're just gonna plus. Okay. That's fine. I can cast this. Kill this. Oh wait, I should have counted first. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm, I'm still two mana away from being able to... um. So I get rid of whatever's in their hand. Oh! What a good card to get rid of! Don't mind if I do. Next turn I can theoretically get... Uh, flip my bolus after I attack. Get some stuff back. Well, probably just get another bolus back, frankly. Um, but yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they have to use this on their main phase. I'm getting... Just the best. Mortify. Sure. Except uh, when I say sure, I mean not. Return to our creature's owner's hand, please. Thank you. This is a one for one because I'm I'm going to actually just cast this again and it'll be totally fine. Bye bye to whatever's in your hands. Another mortify. If they drew a mortify for turn, I don't think it was it was correct for them to do what they just did. I feel like they should have cast mortify. Well, I, I guess it wouldn't have mattered. Yeah, my my opponent has to search every turn. So this one should be in the bag. I, I don't see... Oh, don't, I don't give a shit. I, I don't see a world where I'm screwed. Sure. Take up a devil. I mean, I could even take one of the Teferis back if I want to. I, mean, I kind of just want to sneak this under his veto. Like, dropping his land... Wow, yeah, he just drops the veto because he knows that, uh... Like, he has to deal with my my creatures, because my creatures are lethal. Um, or my bolus. Or, and my bolus. Because my bolus is just going to drown him. Thought collapse? Don't care. Yeah, so I win. So we go ahead and attack. 
we cast Thought Erasure to force my opponent to either counter this. I mean, they, they might as well counter this, right? And then I'm just going to do this, target this, yes, I'm sure, and kill my opponent. I'm so glad I was able to show off the thing that I talked about in the deck deck. <laughs> cool. So this is an Esper... Yeah, it's just Esper Control. Hmm. I saw Lilies. I mean, I saw plenty of Planeswalkers. Like, the issue is I want to bring in, like, this. So, Lava Coil is not necessarily needed in this matchup. Um, like, I love the idea of just strangling them uh, with my creatures. Kefnet, I think, is less good if we're going to make our deck. As is, Tyrant Scorn is tricky, but not as good. Oh, shit. I'm going down 2.8. I think I can actually just drop a land. Right? Down to 2.8 on average. I think I think that's in the... I think 2.7 is, is the range of 25 lands. I don't recall. I do still need to drop some other things. Maybe I don't have all three war bosses. We are going second, so that is something I really should keep in mind. Hmm. Sure, let's try this. I want to. I want to see how this works out. This, as I said, this is a deck I've played once before. Um, so let's see how this goes. Flesh? No flesh. <laughs> One more land would be great. It worked out last time, but I did have 26 cards last time. Um, or 26 lands. I mean, it worked out last time. I'm going to keep it. We we, we won the first game, so I, it, it's a little bit more justifiable to be risky. It's not correct to be risky, uh, but I'm glad that I was. <laughs> Never didn't have it. <laughs> Magic is easy. You just draw what you need. I assume we're going to get Thought Erased. Yep. Let's see which of my three drops you're going to take. I assume they take War Boss, and then they're going to be able to uh, Dovin's Veto Narset. That's my assumption. Um, they could take Dragon God if they if they know that this is going to go uh, to the long game. And they have removal for War Boss and Narset. Um, yeah, wow. Okay, so... They expect this to go to the long game, and I think that's reasonable. Um, play this tapped, and let's see what our opponent does. I assume they're just going to cast... Or just going to cast nothing. Yep, so they have counter spells. I have a Dreadhorde Butcher, which is nice to know. Um, Narset gets countered by more things, um, but the things she gets countered by cost less. Uh, so I could theoretically waste... A mana of my opponent, but I think I'd rather do this. It's gonna get absorbed. Or no, they're playing Thought Collapse as well. Okay, so if my opponent did have removal for this, they they did it wrong and they should have uh, killed this. They should have put a stop on my uh, first. So it looks like that's the case. Yeah, um, if your opponent plays a Legion's War Boss, what you're gonna want to do is. Um... Well, hmm. While it while Legion War Boss is on the stack, if you're if you can as soon as you can, but stop on their uh, main phase so they can't go to a uh, combat. Thought Razor. So Thought Razor plus Dovin's Veto is my guess. So I think they'll take the Butcher here. Yes, because they have Dovin's Veto, they had to take Butcher because Butcher would be uh, another risk on our. Oh, that's not at all what I expected. Okay, I'm fine with that. So, they're on... Can I see how many fucking cards are in? Three? They're on three, so they're relatively far away from this. Damn. That is one issue of uh, going up on creatures. That you miss with Narset a bit more. Um, but we are stopping them from drawing cards. Um, 
All right, they also didn't get a lands. I can go ahead and duress first, but I would rather Narset first to see if there's anything I can get. Meditate Negate. Don't mind if I do. Cast a duress. And if my opponent counters this, that's fine. I would have probably just taken a counter spell. Because I would rather hold up Negate for a threat that my opponent would play. Or a response to something uh, that's important for me to have. Sure. You only draw one card. And I get to take this. Okay. Like... I... I assume my opponent had this, this, and this. Obviously, I could be wrong, but that's my assumption. I... Mortify on that. Do I want to counter that? Not really. I'd, I'd rather just hold the counter for for something more important. Uh, the issue is that my opponent can... Oh, never mind. Alright, cool. Cast this through things. Um, so my opponent will be able to flip this next turn, but I should be able to hit them. I do need to draw some more mana. Oh, wow, that was a good, that was a good uh, flip over as well. And I... So they have this turn to cast something frightening. Cool. Now I have mana. I'm going to go ahead and attack. And what's nice here is that I can um, hold up a counterspell as well as Bedevil. When it does this before the end of my turn, so I get some information. Theoretically, if I had something else to potentially cast, I could. Um, that's totally fine with me because I can just counter it. I could even just let it resolve. Because bouncing Bolus isn't really an issue, and I can just Bedevil it. So yeah, my opponent can't even really cast the Teferi. Kaya's Wrath. I think I just counter this. Like, I, I have a response to the Teferi. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with that. I put my opponent down to five. Oh, fuck. It's so good. It's so good. I never didn't have it. Have your counter spells. I don't care. This this is what I mean. Like this, I think I think this is why um, che the hell is his name? Cheppa uh, made the deck as he did because if you have a threat against control, against a a counter spell based con dude, you're you're so fudged against a counter counter spell based control deck, you're just gonna die. I don't care about any of these counter spells because I have a bolus on the field. Unless he can kill my bolus that's on the field, he's screwed. I'm, li I'm liking this deck. I'm not going to lie. Um, it's the 26. I don't know if I can grind up to Mimic in four days. I really want... So today, if you want to see me climb the first hour of my stream to today at 1 one p.m. U.S. Central, um, GMT minus 5, I'm going to be grinding with this list. Oh, nice cast down, friend. Oh, it's so nice to 2 an Esper deck. I know I'm playing Grixis, and Grixis is, like, the same. Ugh, oh, I'm so close to, to three. Unfortunately, I do have a bunch of other things to do, so I can't actually play another uh, <laughs> another match, because control matches tend to go long. Um, but uh, we're, we're so close. We're so close to getting something else in standard. Um, oh, right. Uh, I do want it to reiterate, because I know not as many people watched yesterday's video. If you go to redeem code and you type in, uh, just mi it's Mythic Magic, I'll type it in. I've already redeemed it. Mythic Magic. Uh, mythic Magic, you'll get three Mythics from um, three random across uh, GRN, Guild of Ravnica, Ravnica Legions, and War of the Spark. Um, at first I thought it was one from each, but it's not. Their, their, Twitter, their tweet for it confused me, because <laughs> I believe the tweet had one from each, but... Um, yeah, it's just three amongst them. You could get duplicates. I believe you can't get a mythic for which you already have four copies. Um, I don't. I haven't seen any con confirmation about that, but whatever. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm just gonna talk for a little bit more. Uh, I assume plenty of people are gonna click off by now. Thanks for uh, thanks for coming. I, I really want to quickly mention um, the SDCC promos, the San Diego Comic Con promos. I still don't like them because I. I want to have a full collection of every printing of every Planeswalker, which is stupid as hell. 
but it's something that I want to do. And the SDCC promos have been previously um, just five Planeswalkers, right, in different styles, and they are expensive. Um, but this time, one, they're not foil, and two, Bolas is the only of the um, is the only one of five that's a Planeswalker. And for what it's worth, this like oh, this art is fantastic. If they turn this into a card style for Arena, I will spend that cash money for it because it, it legitimately is amazing. Uh, all of them are amazing because of the way they incorporate. So it's it's like a silhouette style thing. I'm gonna, I'll link to that down in the description as well. It's like a silhouette style thing, which is super cool. Um, and they use aspects of the uh, background of the landscape. Uh, for example, Kefnet is, there's like blue lands um, of Ravnica. And like, they use a floating building for his eye, for Oketra. Um, they have like some floating spires for like her, her teeth. Um, a spires there for her jaw. Her like forehead is essentially the parhelion and like cloud divots are her eyes, which is just absolutely fantastic. And they, they do that for the other two um, eternal gods as well. Pig God not in here, which I think is fine. I, I like what they're doing with it being um, the uh, the Bolas's buddies and stuff. Uh, but so I mean that's pretty much it. But what I do want to talk about is um, Reddit's new ad thing, where the ads literally just look like normal fucking posts. <laughs> I don't like a chief. <laughs> but still, whatever. It is It is what it is. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'd like to thank my lovely patrons, especially Salamander, Croft, Zinn, and Rexel for the continued support. If you'd like to join them and support the channel, you'll find links to that down in the description below, as well as links to the Discord server and the Aether Hub. One of those places I chat and play games. Uh, the other one is where I host all my deck lists. And if you go to TCG Player, TCG Player via a link from my Aether Hub account, uh, you support your boy, which is uh, really, really awesome. I do, of course, hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and tap that like button, add a subscription to your mana pool, cast a comment to the comment section down below, pass the turn and the vid to some of your friends, and of course, until next time, all will be one.